Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Today I want to talk about something that is quite personal to me and may actually turn off some viewers, but I felt like I really wanted to share this story. And that is the good, the bad, and the ugly of cosmetic enhancements here in Bali. So let me first start out by explaining that I am quite a habitué of cosmetic procedures, and I've done them all over the world. For me, I'm always on a quest to improve myself mentally, spiritually, and physically. Um, I don't really feel like I have to give a justification for why I do these things, but anyway, that's sort of my justification. Up to this point, I've always had really good luck, and I've always had really great experiences, not only here in Bali, but all over the world, Mexico, Thailand, and the United States, where I've had procedures done. But very recently, I had something go very wrong that I am trying to fix, and I'm gonna take you along and explain this process to you, and also sort of then show you what is possible in Bali, what to look out for, and maybe what you wanna be aware of when you think that you're getting a good deal on something. So let me start out by explaining what recently happened to me. All of a sudden, and I'm in my early 30s, this is very random and weird, I don't know why, but I got an acne breakout, very strange. Actually, not that strange when I really think about why. I started using all of these new serums and creams. I just got bored, basically, and I thought I'm getting old. I need new stuff on my face. So I bought some vitamin C serum, and I bought some other crap, and I was just doing too much, and my skin was not having it. So. Very frightened, I went to the dermatologist here at the aesthetic clinic where I get Botox and fillers done. Now, the dermatologist is a different doctor than the one who does my Botox and fillers. This is someone who I had never consulted with before. And I had never had really such a problem with acne my whole life. And I thought that basically getting some shots to just get rid of these pimples would be like a really quick cure-all. So I asked her if she would give me cortisone steroid shots to get rid of these pimples. Now this dermatologist did not inform me that these cortisone shots really should only be used for people who have very severe cystic acne and not little kind of pimple breakouts like I have. She went ahead and gave me these shots and within a few days I noticed that my skin had what is called pitting. Basically, she killed the collagen, the natural collagen that's in my skin and left holes in my skin, basically acne scars. Now my whole life, I have never had an acne scar and I'm someone who cares a lot about their appearance and this to me was very, very devastating. So I went back to the clinic and I said, look, this doctor, who I shall call Dr. Frankenstein, ruined my face and we need to fix it. Now this clinic, in their defense are doing what they can to fix my face. But they don't have all the machines that are really required to get me the kind of healing that I want on the time frame that I want. So today I'm going to a place called ARC Clinic and it's in Denpasar and it's one of the oldest aesthetic clinics here in Bali. And they have a Fraxel CO2 laser machine that they're gonna use on the areas where Dr. Frankenstein put holes in my face. So the idea is to stimulate my own collagen and to remove the indentations in my skin. I chose this particular clinic because they were transparent on their website with pricing and had great reviews from past customers. Prior to coming this day, I had already met once with Dr. Chandra and felt like I would be in good hands. Dr. Chandra, I've been looking forward to seeing you so much to do this Fraxel treatment. I'm really hopeful that after this abscission, I'm gonna show you this is how it's looking. It's been about five months since Dr. Frankenstein did this to me. Um, I felt like this abscission helped a little bit, but I also know that it takes time for the collagen to regenerate. So I'm hopeful you can tell me today what I can expect from the CO2 Fraxel laser uh, and just what the best course of treatment will be to get my face back to what it was before. Okay, so let me just take a look at this area. Okay. I think the deepest one is actually here. Yes, this one, yeah. You have two or three. Yes, I have two on that side. Mm -hmm. And this one is like, it's like more close to each other, mm -hmm. these sides. Yeah, we can do with the Fraxel. Um, in between of the sessions, you can have the substitution again. So, um, if you want to have the substitutions, then 
Drexel substitutions it will help to improve the skin because if the this is the dense is like this yeah mm -hmm. and you did the substitution it release a little bit from the base and with the laser it will hit the collagens up here and we then expect a little bit less like this okay but it's a very slow process yeah do you think i'll see any difference after one treatment one treatment you might see something in two weeks time okay yeah that's the quickest when because the collagen takes time to grow and two weeks is the quickest so this is an erbium laser how is it different from a co2 laser or it uh, is it's the laser. source in the machines that make it different mm -hmm. so the source of the laser is co2 erbium glass erbium yak so that's the source and depends on the source it, how it will determine how strong it will work. Uh, CO2 is the most powerful. powerful, yes, and then RPM after that. Okay, so we will apply the ring. I will leave you with her, so just apply and then we wait around 20 minutes before I will go back, yeah? Okay, okay. give me some strong... Anastasia. Strong laser. No, I'm fine strong. with the pain. I don't have a problem with pain, oh. but I'll put on the laser strong because I want a fast yes. recovery, you know? I will just target it to the base of the scar so it mm -hmm. will plump up quicker. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. See you Kandra. Oh, you're quite familiar that this laser is burning and then you have scabs for a few days, yeah? Is it going to be really ugly, Scab? It's like God's scabs. I don't know. I'm scared, but we'll see. <laughs> At least now everybody is wearing mascar, you know, yes. so I can hide. Nobody will really see. Yeah. But I can still do my normal activities, like tomorrow play tennis. Will you use mask with play tennis? No. I think you cannot then. Why? Because the sun, is it indoor? Indoor. Oh, indoor is okay. Okay, just have to be out of the sun. Yes. Keep close your eyes, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. I start with the lower side. You okay with it? Yeah, no pain. It's less painful than IPL for hair removal. Oh, yes. Because I've had my hair removed almost everywhere on my body. Okay. IPL is really burning. That was easy. Yeah, but have, you have to deal with the downtime for one week. <laughs> well, there's nowhere to go these days. Yeah. But what do you mean? I mean, not bad downtime, no? Just that it will look no. a little bit burnt? Yes. Like, especially the deep one, yeah? Because I need to pull really deep. Mm. So, yeah. Are that your mind? <gasps> yeah, but it won't be so red, I mean, for long, no? I mean, now no. it's just red because you just did the mm. burning, but tomorrow will tomorrow look... Tomorrow it starts to subside. The, day, the third day, is the redness go, but you see, like, dots, many dots, like, dark dots. It's like scabs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I want to show what my skin looks like about 30 minutes after this Fraxel laser treatment. It looks like I have some severe rosacea or something. I mean, luckily right now, everybody has to wear a mask anyway, so nobody is going to see my face like this, though I did have some potential romantic plans this evening, which will clearly have to be delayed until further notice. But anyway, this is what you can expect if you get a Fraxel CO2 laser treatment. And unfortunately, 
This won't be the last one that I have to do. I just want to show everyone this is the situation on day two. Two days later, I'm oozing a little bit at some of the sites and I still don't really feel like I'm in a condition that I would like to be seen in public like this. I really wanted to maybe go to the gym today, but I'm thinking that in this current state of affairs, that's just not gonna be possible. I mean, <laughs> the most ironic and luckiest thing about this moment is that everyone has to wear a mask anyway. Um, pretty much at all times. I mean, I could even go to the gym and wear a mask, but that's not so ideal. Therefore, I probably won't leave the house today. So I just wanted to show, this is now the situation in the morning of day three. Actually, it looks a lot better today. The skin has started peeling and yesterday I think it looked the worst. Today, um, I think it's possible that I would not be so embarrassed to go out even without a mask. It just looks like maybe I got in a little bit of an accident or something. So I'm really hopeful that actually even by tomorrow, a lot of this redness will have resolved. The reason right now some of these uh, spots are red is that um, they're still bleeding after I clean them with the saline solution. So the wound sort of reopens and then it gets red again, but I think it's looking a lot better. And even from the perspective of just the skin level, I don't know, I mean, it's only supposed to get better and better from here on, but it does seem like it has helped ease out that indentation. I feel like the one that's gonna require the most work is the one here that was the deepest, but the rest are already looking quite good. So maybe with just one more subcision treatment and then one more Fraxel, I might be good and then can go and go on with my life again. How great will that be? All right, guys, it's been exactly one week since my Fraxel laser treatment, and I am quite thrilled, honestly, with the results after just one week. Let me be honest, I am wearing a little bit of makeup for the camera this time, because when I saw that initial video at the beginning of this that I filmed where I'm wearing no makeup at all, it was a bit horrifying to me and maybe to you as well. So even though with a little bit of makeup, I think that you can tell my skin is looking a lot better and the indentation is mostly gone. I think that I'm only going to need to do one more subcision treatment, which that's the treatment where they put the needle in your skin to release the scar tissue and then one more Fraxel and I will probably be back to normal. And this is a huge relief because Dr. Chandra, the amazing doctor who did this for me at ARC Clinic had originally said that she thought it might be four to five treatments to get my skin back to normal. I think that is an overestimation and I think that we are very close to getting myself and my skin back to what it was prior to this mishap happening. So at the end of this video, obviously, I also wanted to just kind of talk about in general having cosmetic procedures done either in Bali or places where they are less expensive like Thailand, Mexico, etc., where I've also had things done. And I would say that you don't have to be scared to generally have things done. Now, Bali isn't a place where I would do a major plastic surgery. I don't even know if they have a real plastic surgeon on the island, but if I was going to do something very major aesthetic, I would probably do that in Thailand where I've had a surgery, I won't say which one, but you can leave that to your imagination. Or I would go to Turkey or something where they just have a lot more experience working with Westerners. And in Bali, it doesn't really have a culture of plastic surgery. However, in Bali, if you're going for Botox or fillers or laser treatments, other non-invasive things, they are great for that. And the prices are really, really good. I mean, you can expect to pay maybe one third to one half of what you would pay in the West. And I mean, if you're going to some doctor in Beverly Hills or Fifth Avenue, there's no comparison on price. And I think things like Botox and fillers, if you have a good injector who's been trained, especially internationally, you really have nothing to worry about. So that comes down to maybe reading Google reviews and going in person to have a consultation with that doctor, asking to see some of their past work. You can kind of get an idea of whether that person inspires confidence or not. The other thing about Bali and other places where I've had cosmetic procedures done is 
this isn't some back alley clinic that I'm going to where they're injecting silicone or cement or whatever into your face. They have the brand name products, Botox, Restylane, Juvederm, Radius, etc. So you don't have to be worried that you're getting some counterfeit or fake product because you see the box there, they're getting it from the manufacturer, you're getting a quality product. And that's why the procedure is not going to be per se cheap you know, because there is still a cost of having that brand name product. But you're obviously saving just on the cost of the injector themselves because the salaries are lower here in this part of the world than they would be if you're getting it done in America, for example. So I think that, you know, if you are wanting to save some money and, and have a little bit of a refreshment done to yourself, you don't have to be afraid. Yes, I had this one kind of bad thing happen to me, and I would say that it was half my fault for going in and asking for these cortisone steroid shots when I was ignorant about them, but also half that particular dermatologist's fault for either not diluting enough or injecting too deeply, or quite truthfully telling me that I should not even have these shots and that there are better treatment options. But the good news is that there is the technology here in Bali the lasers, etc., to fix that. So this is not some sort of fatal flaw that I'm going to have to live with for the rest of my life. And that is quite a relief. So in conclusion, I really wanted just to say that Bali is a good place to have all of these things done, that you don't have to be afraid if you're coming in for something minor, if you're on vacation and you just feel like you want to have a little touch up and save some money from what it would cost you to do this back home. This is absolutely a good place. You just need to find a doctor and a clinic that inspires confidence. But for all of these little minor tweaks and things like Botox, fillers, laser, blah, 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 absolutely no worries to do that here in Bali. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that it inspired you maybe in some way or just entertained you or maybe you looked at this and thought, wow, he is so superficial and vain. But in any of those cases, thank you guys for watching and until the next video, hope everyone stays well, take care and see you later.